Our lesson for November the 1st, 2015, Lesson 9. We're in Unit 3, which is titled Spreading the Gospel. Our lesson title is Who Will Come to the Rescue? Our devotional reading is taken from Psalms 18, verses 1 through 9. Our background scripture is from the book of Acts, chapter 12, verses 1 through 24. And our printed text is chapter 12 of Acts, verses 1 through 11. And our key verse, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Acts 12, 5. Our lesson aim as a result of studying this lesson, the student should be able to explore the story of Peter's deliverance from prison, recognize and appreciate the power of prayer in difficult circumstances, and commit to praying for those who witness put them in life-threatening or difficult situations. Who will come to the rescue? We find in verse 1 of our lesson stating, Now at about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Herod the king. King Herod, though originally, uh, Edom, of an Edomite family was the grandson of Herod the Great. Yet it seems that he had been an apostolate to the Jewish religion. For Josias, the Jewish historian, said that he was zealous for the Mosaic rites. Herod was not only Tetrarch of Galilee, but had also the government of Judea committed to him by Claudius, the Roman emperor, and he resided most of the time at Jerusalem. We find three things we are told that he did. It says that, first of all, that Herod stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. That is, that he began to vex them or afflict them through imprisoning them finding them, spoiling their houses and goods and other ways of harassing them at first. But then afterwards, he proceeded with even greater instances of cruelty. We find in verse 2 it says that, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. James, the brother of John, was one of the three apostles most intimate with the Lord Jesus Christ. He was one of the first three of Christ's disciples. He was also one of those that were the witness of his transfiguration and his agony in the garden. James was part of that inner circle that consisted of Peter and his brother John. Peter, James, and John. He was one of those sons of Zebedee whom Jesus told that they would drink of the cup that he was to drink of and be baptized with the baptism that he was to be baptized with. And that James suffered for the sake of the gospel. We are told that he was slain with the sword. That is, his head was cut off with the sword. That it was a cruel execution that he received. That it was an execution of dishonor. And so we find that King Herod did this and did this. And he began to vex the church, and then he became bolder, emboldened with his cruelty towards those. And, and we see in verse 3 of our lesson where it states, 
And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Herod, because he saw that it pleased the Jews, that is, the Jewish leaders, the, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin council, not the common man, but the Jewish leaders, Herod Agrippa, he held this appointment under the Roman emperor. Now, this type of foreign rule has always been unpopular among the Jewish leaders. In order, therefore, to secure a peaceful reign and to prevent insurrection and turmoil, it was necessary for Herod to appease their favor. So, in order for him to appease their favor, though he was not really zealous about uh, the Jewish faith or, or wanting to serve God, but he was doing this for political expediency. Just like, just like we see politicians today so often. Three years in nine months, every Sunday we can go to church and, and a politician won't show up. But then when it comes election time, here they come. Here they come flocking to our congregations. And, and, and so they want to speak to us. And they want to express that they concern for us. That they have a mutual love for God as we do. Which is just the force. That they are only doing it for political reasons. So that they can do what? So that they can attain the votes or the favor of the people so that they can stay in office for their own personal gain. So now King Herod found that it was necessary that it was necessary for him to court their favor so that it would be peace in that region and that Claudius the Emperor would not get no bad report about him not being able to govern as he would have him to govern. So in order to appease them, he said, we are told that he proceeded further to take Peter also. Peter, one of the principal apostles, and who was well known by the Jewish leaders and against whom the Jews had particular apathy and hatred, and that they would have been glad to have been rid of him. For Peter and John had openly withstood and opposed him. We found in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 18 and 20, where it speaks of Peter and John after them being in the temple preaching the Lord Jesus Christ and being arrested and warned by the Sanhedrin not to do it again and we find this stated in verses uh, 4 through 20 of Acts the 4th chapter and it says and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus but Peter and John answered and said unto them whether it is right in the sight of God to hearken unto you or more than unto God. Judge ye, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Peter refused to be intimidated by man. And so he stood his ground and said that he was going to obey God more so than man. So this pleased the Jews. Harry knew that this would please the Jews to get rid of Peter. He he had already killed James, so now he was he trying to get rid of Peter. So we find in verses four and five it says, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him. Intended after after Easter to bring him forth to the people. And Peter therefore was kept 
in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. When Herod had apprehended him, when he had arrested him, he put him in prison. He put Peter in prison during the religious festival of the Passover because it would have been deemed improper to have engaged in the trial of a supposed criminal during these religious festivals. That even though they had malice and murder on their heart, that they was going to go through the ritual of that they were so pious that they they did not want to defile the so-called religious days. But all the while, they had murder on, on their hearts. Therefore, it says that King Harry caused Peter to re be retained in principle until after the Passover had ended. Now we see that Peter, that Peter, he was guarded by a total of 16 soldiers, four at a time. So that was supposed to put him publicly to death to gratify the Jewish leaders. So King Herod was holding him. He had those, a total of 16 soldiers. They was coming in shifts, four hour shifts to guard him, four at a time. And he wanted to make sure that Peter did not escape so that after these religious feast day was over, Herod had a plan of bringing Peter forth so that he can be crucified. I mean, not crucified, but he could be executed before the Jewish leaders. We find in that verse 5, it says that Peter, therefore, because it is that he was kept in prison, that the church, the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and because they were aware of Peter's imprisonment and danger, and because they had no resources of their own, that they did not have armies or powers, or, or that they had the ability to withstand those political powers, Herod and, and his soldiers or the Jewish leaders, is that what? What did they do? They, we are told that they went to God, even in the midst of this most discouraging circumstances, that, that they went to God and that they went to him in prayer. We see that they prayed for Peter, earnestly praying for him to God, that that God will watch over and deliver him. Jesus told us in Luke 18, 1, that men ought always to pray. Prayer is very important. And really as believers, saints of God, children of God, the greatest example that was that has been said before us about the imp the importance of prayer, we the only thing we need to do is to take a look at the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Jesus Christ, that was God manifested in the flesh. That we, we see all through the Gospels, that Jesus prayed constantly and often to the Heavenly Father. Now, we ought to realize this. If it was necessary for Jesus to pray, what do that tell us about us, uh, 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 about our weak self? We don't have no power to do anything or to change the circumstances that come upon us. Jesus was able to 
raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind. Demons trembled when they seen him coming. The elements, the winds, and the seas, they obeyed his voice. But we are told that Jesus would often go off and pray to his father. That's something for us to think about. We're told in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 12, where it tells us that, that as Christians, that as believers, that as the children of God, that we should be rejoicing in hope. Patience in tribulations, continuing, continuing digitally, diligently in prayer. That prayer should be not just an emergency outlet, but prayer should be our attitude. Not just when we are in need of something, but we need to be prayerful at all times. So we find that the church prayed, prayed for Peter and that, the, and that they prayed for him without ceasing. They just didn't say one prayer and then go about their business, but they continued in prayer. They, they, they prayed for inter, they interceded on behalf of of Peter. And we find in verse 6 and 7 of our lesson where it states, And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, the very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and the keepers before the door that kept the prisoners. There Peter was, a squad, four soldiers. He was in between two. One was one was standing at the door, of the, and one was on the outside of the door, making sure that 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 Peter did not escape or that he would be delivered by his cohort. But we see, in verse seven, tells us and says, "Behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him." That should be an angel of the Lord came unto him, that is Peter. And the light shone in the prison, and that he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off of him. So we told that even in the midst of this hopeless situation, we see where God sent an angel, and that, and that he shook Peter. He shook Peter, and though even though he was bound, that he that that the that his chains fell off of him, and that he was able to leave the prison. And we find in verses nine through eleven where it states, "And Peter went out, followed him, and was not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision." And when they had passed the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened unto them on his own accord. And they went out and passed on through on one street, for with the angels departed with him. So we see that, that the angel, that he brought Peter out of the prison, that they would... They was in the deepest part of the prison, but the angels brought him forth and out of the gate and that the gate opened on his own. And then and then when they went out and they passed through one street, and then after that, the angel departed from Peter, and Peter stood there alone. Verse 11 told us, tells us, and when Peter was come to himself, that in other words, Peter, first of all, Peter thought all this was just a dream, that 
that he was dreaming. But then once he came to himself and realized that this was not a dream, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angels and have delivered me out of the hands of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. That even in the midst of this impossible situation where it seems that all hope was lost, James had been beheaded. Now Peter was down in the, in the deepest part of the jail, locked up, chained up to, to two guards at all times. And then not only that, but it was a guard standing inside his cell, then it was a guard standing outside his cell at the door. But then Peter looked around and he said, for I know for sure, in other words, I know for myself that the Lord sent his angels to deliver me. Have you ever been in a situ hopeless situation where you know, regardless of what people might say, they might call it luck or, or just the circumstances or co coincidence, but you know that for yourself, regardless of what, me what people might say or think or the improbability of it, that you know and can't nobody change your mind that it was God that helped you, that it was God that protect you, that it was God that delivered you or yours through difficult times and situations when it seemed that all was lost and impossible. And so now Peter, Peter has this testimony within himself. He said, I know. of a surety that it was the Lord that sent his angel. And this was done, why? Because the church was praying for Peter's deliverance. And so, prayer is very important. Prayer is something that we need to be aware of and that we need to use. So many times there are situations or obstacles in our lives that we do not have the power or the ability to do anything about it. We might be limited by by space or time that that our loved one might be in one state and we are in a different state. But see, but we worship of God who's, who's omnipresent, that he's everywhere at the same time. We worship a God that is omnipotent. That is, is that he has the power. He has the power that we don't. He has the power to change situations and people and so instead of us being frustrated instead of us being so fearful or or just destitute of hope god has given us as his children prayer now what is prayer prayer is conversing with god Prayer is the communication of the soul with God. Not in contemplation or meditation, but in direct address to Him. Directly talking to Him. Now, understand it. Prayer, it may be oral, that is us speaking with our mouth, or mental with our mind. Prayer can be occasional or constant or a sudden brief utterance or prayer could be formal as in a church setting or a congregational prayer or either that it could be 
like just a sudden utterance when, when danger all of a sudden just rushes upon you. The only thing you say, Lord, oh, please help Lord Jesus. Lord, have mercy. That is sudden prayer. Prayer. Prayer is be is a beseeching of God the Father. That is, prayer is beseeching means that it is a pleading unto God the Father. It is pouring out of the soul before the Lord and seeking and seeking unto God in making supplication. Pacific request. We're told in the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, in verse six, where it tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understandings, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is a privilege, an opportunity that that we as the children of God, the believers, that we can boldly go be, before our Father in heaven in prayer. And it says that, and that, and let our request be be made known unto God, and and that the peace of God that passes all understanding, it will keep us that we don't have to be anxious, we don't have to be fearful, we don't have to live on in anxiety. Let God know our need and our concern. Why? Because He cares for us. He 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 knows about us and. And as a loving God and as a loving Father, He wants the best for us. Prayer, prayer. What prayer does, it shows a belief in the personality of God. That that our God is, is a personal God, that, that that He is not a distant God. That 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 he hears us and cares about us and that he's not aloof from us that that he wants us to bring our concerns to him and then not only to bring our concerns to him that but prayer is is also our belief in his ability and willingness to hold communication with us the father wants us to communicate with him, to worship him, to to praise him, to thank him. Not just to be the type of child that that the only time that we are heard from is that when we want something. But we could just pray and, and, and just thank him for, for who he is. Thank him for what he has already done. Thank him for his mercy, for, for really in his holiness he should have cut us all off a long time ago but because God is rich in mercy what he spared us because God is rich in mercy that he sent his son to die for us Romans 5 8 says that God commended that means that he demonstrated his love for us that while we was yet sinners that what Christ died for us, that he didn't wait till we cleaned ourselves up because we could, but he died for us. Why? Because he so loved us and he wanted to help us. So what? That we can have fellowship with him, that, 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 that we can come and commune and communicate with, with him. Prayer is belief that God, that that he has personal control over all things and that all his creatures and all their actions and that prayer is for us to understand that that God sees all and, and, 
and that God is in control, that, that all is not lost, but for us to do what? To trust in him. And then prayer, acceptable prayer, not just any type of prayer, but acceptable prayer must be what? Sincere, from the heart, offered with what? Reverence and godly fear. That is, with reverence and respect. That that God is not on our level. That God is not a man. That but that He is a omnipotent and that He is a holy God. And so we should be come before Him with that same attitude of reverence and respect. And then also that we should realize and have a humble sense of our own insignificance as creatures and our own unworthiness as sinners. All of us, all of us should have bust hell wide open a long time ago, but God, because of his mercy, he spared us. And then when we come to him, we should come with what? With earnest persistence and with unhesitating submissions to the divine will. There are basically three answers to prayer. Yes, no, and wait. A prime example is that we read in the gospel where where the father at the Lord's baptism said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We also see at the Mount of Transfiguration where Jesus was trans transfigured where they showed a, a glimpse of his divine glory that the voice from heaven said, this is my Beloved son, hear ye him. Then there was an example where Jesus was in the, in the garden of Gethsemane. And we are told that, that Jesus was off praying and that he was in such agony that, that, that he sweated drops of blood and that he was in such agony that he told his father in heaven that his soul was exceedingly sorrowful and that if, if, if it was able, a possibility that, that the father would remove that cup that he had to drink from him. But we see that Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So Jesus set the example that though he prayed for deliverance from the agony, the, the agony of that cup, it was not the Father's will. So now, since so we, on the same page, is that we we have to understand that if the God do not hear, I mean, excuse me, if God do not answer the prayer that we want him to be answered that we still should unhesitantly submit to his divine will. Why? Because God knows what's best for us, that, that, that he got a purpose for us. So, so we are told in, in Psalms 16, excuse me, Psalms 18, verse 6, where it says, In my distress... I call unto the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. We have to understand this, most importantly, that, that God hears and answers our prayer. But first of all, in order for the Lord to hear and, and answer our prayer, we have to have a personal relationship with him. 
and that and that personal relationship only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father except by him. So we should first of all make sure that we have the right relationship with God. And then it says that then he that has the Son also has the Father. And he who has not the Father, excuse me, he who have not the Son have not the Father. So we see now that who will come to rescue? We have to understand that, that God, God if I God is our refuge and the very present help in time of trouble. So we are to give our cares to the Lord. Why? Because he cares for us. May God bless you and keep you.